the gifts of Christmas. We have looked at the gifts of, of love, the unwavering love of God, which is the foundation for the unshakable hope that we can have. The positive, um, good outlook, if you will, being about you know, confident expectation what the future may hold. And we've also looked at this unspeakable joy that comes out of that hope, which is founded on that love of God. Today, we're going to be looking at the aspect of peace, the gift of peace. <clears throat> Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote these words as the Civil War raged and after personal tragedy in his own life. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols ply. And wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And I thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. In despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. This, of course, is from the song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Now, that's not the end of it, of course. He ends, he ends it very differently, so you can go ahead and look at that. But I just want to focus on even today. He wrote this 150 years ago. What's it like today? Today we have war in the streets of our cities. Twelve major cities have set records for murders this year. There's rumors of war in our world. China and Taiwan. Russia, Ukraine. And I could keep on listing others if you want. We have divisiveness, a severe divisiveness between the vaxxed versus the unvaxxed and all of that health stuff. I can keep going, but you know, we don't need to be told we don't know the way of peace because our history proves it. Our history proves we don't know the way. All we seem to do is divide. Every once in a while you unite, but then guess what? We divide again and separate. We need help. Enter the Prince of Peace. On the eighth day after John the Baptist was born, according to the law of God, he would, be, he would be circumcised and then named, christened, if you will, dedicated to the Lord. This was six months. On the eighth day of, after John was born, six months before Jesus was born, John was named. And at that, his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesied. This is recorded in Luke chapter 1, verses 76 to 79. He says, And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the light from heaven is about to break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us to the path of peace. John was a prophet of God, the first one in 400 years. That's a long time of silence, but here was John suddenly speaking as a prophet of God. And he was calling the people to repent of their sin and to return to a life of following God. Not following after, after laws and money and idolatry, not to follow after the philosophies of our world, but instead to follow God once again. That's what the role of a prophet would do, is call God's people back to him. Upon doing so, he would then rebaptize them in the Jordan River, thus giving him the name Baptizer. That's where he named John the Baptist. He was known as John the Baptizer. And God was preparing his people, the people there, for his gift of salvation. Jesus Christ, who was coming soon. He was already in the world, but he hadn't begun his ministry. And John was preparing the people to be ready for him. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says that God saved you by his special favor, known as grace. 
when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. It's a gift. It's not something we earn. It's not something we make. It's not something we create. It's something we receive and believe in. Salvation is not a reward for the things we have done, it says in verse 9, so none of us can boast about it. Exactly, we can't boast about our salvation. We can't boast about, hey, look at this, I did save myself, look how good I am. We try that, don't we? It doesn't work, though. Because always someone else has got something more to brag about. No, we boast about Jesus Christ. We boast about Him. John also identified Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. To 1 John 1, 9, 1, 29. And since God is merciful, our Heavenly Father is merciful, not that He's not giving us what we actually do deserve. <laughs> he sent His Son, the light from heaven, to shine light in the dark and to break the devil's power. That is, the shadow or fear of death. And to guide our feet to the way of peace. Yeah. This, this way of peace, or path of peace, if you will. Walking in total darkness is very difficult. You probably, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried it, you probably have. Even in our homes, when you have full light during the daytime, or lights are on during the night, you walk around your house, you don't even think about it. I don't think about it, I just walk. I want to go somewhere, I go there. I want to go down the steps, I go down the steps, I go up the steps. You know, I go down the hall, I go to the bathroom, I go to the bedroom, I go to the basement, you don't name it, whatever it is I go to, because lights are on, it's not a big deal. But all of a sudden at nighttime, poof, turn off all the lights in the house, my confidence goes, goes down. Because you can't quite see everything, even though you know the layout of the house. Can you imagine walking a trail that you don't know? The trail, that, that is the, the path of peace. We don't know the path of peace. You can just look at our history. We don't know it. So if there's something you don't know, and you're walking in darkness, it's a little hard to, to walk in the dark. It's a little difficult. It's easy to stumble and fall. It's easy to get hurt. It's easy to get lost. But if I were to add some light to that situation, it makes it a whole lot easier, isn't it? All of a sudden, ooh, I can see. Just like when you add a flashlight, you flip on the light switch. Boy, it's a whole lot easier to see, isn't it? Yes, it is. You see, I need the light of heaven. I need the light of heaven, Jesus, to light the way as I walk the path of peace daily. Because without him, I can't walk it. I'm going to fall and I'm going to go off of it somewhere. Because I don't know the way. But he does. And as the light of heaven, he will lead the way. Now, I want you to understand, I do not walk while shining the flashlight behind me. You know, if I'm walking in a dark trail or something outdoors and I got a flashlight, or, I wear, wear, or perhaps I have a headlamp, I don't put it on the back of my head. I put it on the forehead. I hold the flashlight in my hand out front. I don't put it behind me because I need to know where I'm going. In other words, the light goes ahead of me. Jesus, the light of heaven, must be going ahead of us so I can follow him. Romans 5.1 tells us that, therefore, since we have been justified, that is declared right. We are guilty, but he would declare us right. Why? Through faith. That's obviously because of Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. In other words, because of this, we have peace with God, peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So through Him, I have peace with God. You know what that means? That means that I am saved from judgment and wrath of God. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to stand up there and give my account. In other words, to stand there and say, well, this is why I did this. And so, no, God, you, this is why you should accept me. This is why you should not send me into hell because of this. I mean, that's, no, I don't have to do that because I belong to Jesus Christ. I have peace with God. It makes me a child of God. And not only that, he's my heavenly father. He's the perfect father. If I've never known one, he will be the perfect one. He will never abandon me, never abuse me. He will never take advantage of me or anything like that. He will always care for me. He will love me, and he will provide for me. That's what he will do. I have peace with him. I'm not at odds with him. I'm not estranged from him. Instead, I am reunited, and I'm at peace with him. Through Jesus, I can live at peace, not only with Him, but I can live at peace with others now, because I understand what it means to have peace. 
as racial and ethnic and social and economic barriers are put up by people to divide people, guess what? They begin to disappear as I walk this path of peace, following Christ, the Prince of Peace, the light of heaven. And I follow him. Why? Because, again, I'm at peace with God. Because I'm at peace with God, I've learned to have peace with people. All the barriers that we put up to divide, to separate, to, to and all the stuff that we do to show that, oh, well, I'm, I'm more equal than this person, and I'm better than that, and it's got competition and all this, this oppression stuff and, and garbage and everything that we do. Guess what? It begins to disappear. Why? Because I realize... I'm walking the path of peace, and I begin to not only walk the path of peace, but I follow what Jesus is doing. And as I follow the light of heaven, as Jesus is leading, I step where he steps, and I do as he does. I treat people as he treats people. I love people as he loves people. In other words, I would be Jesus to the world. I would say, this is the way Jesus would love you. This is the way I will treat you because I am following the light of heaven. I am following it. So I become a peacemaker. I treat others as he treats them. A person who's made in the image of God and is able to be saved through faith in Jesus. I treat everyone the same. That's what I am, as I walk this path, I will learn to do. It doesn't always happen overnight, that's true. But I learn to do this because I'm following the light of heaven and He is training me, He is molding me, He is shaping me through the power of the Holy Spirit to be transformed through the renewing of my mind to understand what it means to be a person of peace, a peacemaker. The church, the body of Christ, is to be a body of peace. It is to encompass everyone should be welcome, to become redeemed from their sin, to be saved and for, from their sin, to be forgiven of their sin. Everyone should be that way. Everyone, whoever, no matter what it is, they come in with the baggage that they have can be set free from that through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what circumstances you came from. Everyone can be set free from that. That's where the body of Christ is to be, is a body of peace. In Romans 14, 17, it should be this way because the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Peace, that's what it is. I mean, very simply, even in the church or even just in the community with one another, we should greet people in peace. Look at this in Luke chapter 24, verse 36. Listen to these words. Jesus said, stood among them, that is the disciples, and said to them, Peace be with you. It was a greeting. It's a greeting of peace. And not only that, we say farewell in peace in the Bible. Look at Romans 15, 33, where it says, The God of peace be with you all. We welcome people, we greet them, and we say farewell in peace. In this kingdom, Jesus reigns as the king of peace. We talk about this kingdom, it's a matter of peace. I mean, righteousness and joy too, he says, but we're talking about peace. So in this kingdom, we have, it's a matter of peace at, the, at its core. Well, guess what? In this kingdom, Jesus reigns as the king of peace. His kingdom is a kingdom of peace. It's what it is. I mean, and so should the church be a church of peace? Yeah, we should be. Should we be, you know, as children of peace? Yes, because we're part of the kingdom of peace as we follow the light of heaven on the path of peace. In John chapter 14, 27, he says this, that peace I leave with you, Jesus says, my peace I give you. <clears throat> so it's not like we have to make this. The peace is already there. And what he does is he is going to give us his peace. He gives us his peace to rule in our hearts. Peace with God so we can have peace with others. And our minds so we, are, so we were at rest and have peace with God and have peace with others. And our souls were at peace with God and with others. And our bodies were at peace with God and others. Wouldn't you just love to have a life where you have no anxiety, where the anxiety just continues to drop, the stress continues to drop, your health actually gets better because you know what? You can rest and you can be content. Why? Because you are at peace with God and with others. Why? Because you are following the light of heaven. who is leading us on the path of peace. Through him, we can learn to be a peacemaker by following him, the light of heaven on the path of peace. Let us pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, I do thank you once again for your word and for your truth. I thank you for the reality of this, this part of the Christmas gift. Peace. Father, first off, I thank you for your unwavering love, which gives us that unshakable hope. And from that, just, it just comes and flows from us this unspeakable joy that we have. As we live out an unending peace, the peace that we have with you because of Jesus Christ, and because we have peace with you, we can have peace with others, following your two greatest commands, to love you and to love others. So I ask, Lord, that you would help us to be transformed in our, in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls, and our bodies, to be filled with peace, wholeness, and completeness, Lord, so that we might be able to live, with, live at peace with others, Lord, and not see them for the differences that are there, Lord, instead to, to look upon them as someone who's made like you. Someone who's made in your image, made by you. Someone who is able to be saved through Jesus Christ. Someone who could become a, or is a brother and sister in Christ. Help us, Lord, to have your eyes. To step as you step and to do as you do. And treat others as you would treat others. To love them as you would love them. To care for them as you would. Father, I'm asking that for each one of us that we would be able to be children of peace as members of churches of peace, as citizens of the kingdom of peace, led by the prince or, to be honest, the king of peace, Jesus Christ, your son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it's in his name, Father, that we pray. Amen.